Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some scroll saw work on this nice pair of angelfish swimming through the ocean there. Now the idea is we're going to cut out all the white sections, just leaving that thin line, that thin black line there. So it's going to be a bit of a delicate piece towards the end of the project. But if we go steady, take our times, we shouldn't have too many issues. Now, when I printed this off, these lines are quite thin. I'm just looking around now as we speak from the marker pen, but I can't find it. But basically, once we've printed it off, I get the Sharpie pen and just go over the lines. And you can make those as thick as you like, depending on how confident you are. I certainly couldn't cut them out as original thin ones. And even these might be a bit delicate for me, but we'll give it a go and just enjoy ourselves. Now, we've printed the image off, two A4 sizes, so it's literally 12 inches by... 15 and a half across roughly. Now for the actual cutting material, I'm going to use a backer. This comes off a wardrobe or the base of a drawer, pine drawer set. This is just your cheap stuff and I reckon that's about three millimeters thick. I've got one of my CNC bits and it's basically the same thickness, 3.175 millimeter. So we've got three millimeters for that. So it's a bit fragile and it won't be the best stuff to cut in the world, but I've used it before. And for these little fun projects, there's certainly shouldn't have too many issues, he says, hopefully. Remember, all these white section, sections are going to be cut out, so it will be delicate, that is for sure. And once we've cut it all out, we'll pop it onto a backer. I'm just looking around me now. It might be something like 12 millimetres. This looks a bit thick. I do have some 5.5 in the corner of the shed we'll get to. But basically, once we cut all that out, so it looks like the papered image, we will literally get a piece of this to the same size and stick it down like so. I'm going to use resin to stick it down. Once it's all nicely set and dried, we'll basically fill in each section with coloured resin. If resin is not your thing, you could mark this off on your backer, remove that, paint it all the colours you want, and then stick on your wooden template afterwards. And you'll get back the same effect. I just put like the, the the shininess and stuff of the uh, resin itself. So it might be a 12 millimeter backer. It's quite thick, is that? It might be a bit over the top. Or if not, I do have some 5.5 millimeter behind me. We might use that. We'll see how we go on. Before that, obviously, we've got to stick this image to the wood. Now, normally I'd use carbon paper, and you could have used it on this simply and draw around it all. And then once you've got your thin lines on there, you could use your Sharpie pen. Just to thicken it up. I prefer it that way myself. But also, we can literally just stick that straight there. So for that, we line it all with painter's tape first. That will go along there like so. And then we use spray on glue. I'll just use any glue I can find. I've got no preference. I've had this tin for a couple of years now. Like I said previously, I normally carbon paper. So tin of glue lasts me a long, long time. So we spray that on there. And then we literally will stick that on, make sure it's nice and secure, and hopefully that should stay in place. I've seen people where they've got clear tape and covered the full thing. Everybody has their own methods. Just find one that suits you. So we've got that all stuck down. Then we need to drill each hole, what they call a pilot hole. Remember, we've got to get inside these sections. So somehow we've got to make a hole with a drill. Now for me personally, the bigger the hole I can make, the easier it is to fill that blade in from underneath or on top, whichever way you load your scroll saw. Some people prefer the little small holes in the corners. I'll just drill these anywhere and move across with the blade. And that's plenty big enough is that drill piece. So we will drill all those pilot holes in just for our little blades to feed into. Now for me, I prefer scroll saw, a uh, spiral blade, should I say. They are literally spiraled the full length and they will cut in any direction. So once we've done our first hole, we can literally just put that in through the pilot hole and just start feeding that round like so. And we'll move on to the next hole and so on and so on. I always start on the smaller areas first. You might be tempted to come along and do all the bigger sections. Then you're going to make it a bit fragile in the middle. I've also seen folk where they will drill a piece out and then just put a temporary tape underneath to start into place so it secures either side of that line. I've never bothered that myself. I'll just cut it out and let it drop out as it is. So spiral blades for me. You also get a pin blade. They come on your 
cheaper saws you get a pin at both ends like so i do apologize for the state of my hands i've actually been cleaning the shed out i've been using an angle grinder for the last eight, eight weeks since christmas making bowls and stuff and boy does that make a mess so bin blades and also your professionals and there's some fantastic people out there far too much patience for me they get what they call a pinless blade so thin is this it's amazing no ideal for delicate work like i said on this one you'll be fine a pin blade will fit into any of these sections once you're drilled in you obviously just need a bigger hole for that pin blade to go in if you're drilling a small pilot hole obviously a pinless blade will pop in a lot easier so it's entirely up to you what you want to use for me scroll saw pegas number five unfortunately my old drapper scroll saw i have to use these adapt adapter clamps that is the only thing that puts me off with a lot of scroll saw work because i've used the allen key take that top feed that into the piece put the allen key put that back on hook it underneath the saw hook it on top of the saw and you're going to be doing that as many times as many cuts you need so the good thing about these little projects you can spend an hour on it and put it to one side you can always come back another day just enjoy yourself more important for me i don't sell any of my items i don't make any of my items to sell shall i say i have sold in the past and i basically just give them away so i'm in no rush it's not a production line for me where you're making 10 of the same pieces just pumping them out and pumping them out this is all enjoyment for me and i just want to spend 20 minutes half an hour of your time just to explain the way i do things and you'll also find in my little videos i tend to talk a lot so i'm going to shut up now and basically get our tape on get the spray on get the paper on drill our pilot holes and then we'll go over to the scroll saw let's do that next Right, you can see from that, we've stuck it down, we put our glue on, we put the paper on, we've drilled all our pilot holes in there. So every section's got a little hole in, and that's just a nice size to feed our blade in from the back, and then start cutting these sections out. Right, that's all the easy stuff over with now. We're basically just going to put this on the scroll saw, and cut all these sections out, just going nice and steady. Remember... It's only three millimetres thick, so it won't be the best stuff, but it's free recycled stuff, and that's the best wood for me. Okay, let's start cutting this one out and just take our times. Right, we've got our first pilot hole filled in with the blade. With all your blades, be it pinless or pinned or spiralled, they want to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you know you've got them in the right way. We've took the tension up, got a nice ping-ping sound. That means you're ready to go. I will literally cut this out at the real life speed, as it called. And then with the rest of them, we will speed it up a little bit. Because once you've done a couple of holes, hopefully you get the general idea. So we'll literally just cut this one out as it is now. And then we'll speed up for the rest of it. Okay.
Right, we've made it all the way round. We've had nothing broken off as yet. So that's a good sign. So you can see from that, a bit of fragile piece. But we, like I say, we've managed to get all the way around, no problem. Now the next stage we made is just to remove the little fluffy bits from the back. I have to basically use a bit of sandpaper, put it on a flat surface like so. And just give it a, just a gentle, gentle sanding down. Just get rid of those bits. We don't have to go too fantastic, remember, because we are going to fill this in with resin. Or you can get these little files. I personally don't use them myself. A little box of files like so. And if you prefer to use them, and just gently go around. Just sand off those little bits here. Slow process. Just take your time. Don't get overly excited at this stage. I've heard of folk actually taking a torch and burning those little bits off. Don't know if you can see them. Certainly some, something I wouldn't recommend, that is for sure. So I'll just give it a general tidy up at the back. And then we'll come to the front again and basically just gently peel off all our blue tape. And then we'll look up to what size backer, be it the 12 millimeter one, which is quite chunky here. I think that make a nice backer if you visualize that on there like so underneath. And we'll make a little frame around it. And I think that's going to be plenty, plenty chunky enough. I have got a 5.5 millimeter one and it just looks a little bit thin. Obviously, you can make a nice frame to go on this. I've never made a frame yet, so we'll just stick to putting them on tobaccos for now. So, quick tidy up, and then we come back. We'll see about putting some stain on this and then attaching it to the backer board. Right, that's enough general tidying up and sanding down for me. We've got rid of all our little nodules at the back, or well, 99% of them. Like I said previously, it's not really going to affect us, because we are going to fill these front sections in with resin, so hopefully any little bits that are sticking out, they will be covered with the resin. Now off camera, I've cut the backer out. It's literally 13 inches by 17 so nothing to see there, so basically just a nice straight cut. I actually cut this out on a scroll saw, but obviously you can cut it with whatever you prefer. And I've just rounded off those corners. Think about plywood, this is 12 mil plywood. Just make sure you go around the edges. We've had no voids that I know of. And I just sand it off slightly, too much sanding, and you will take your first layer off. But I'm going to put some stainer on this, so hopefully we're not going to be too bothered about those corners. So... As a project is progressing, that's obviously going to be our backer. Now, you, you could have cut it so it's in line with the actual piece itself right up. I've oversized it by, let's say, an inch or so. So, when it's all stuck down, we'll have a nice frame all the way around, like so. Now, I'm going to use the wood dies. I've used them on previous projects. I do like them. I've actually finally gone out and purchased a nice dark teak. We use that for the backer board and for the top section it's just simply going to be a nice light teak and i do find when the two colors go together it's just a nice finish and then literally we will just resin glue this all the way down let it sit overnight and then basically when we come back we're just going to start filling each section in with the colored resin that's somewhere near what we need now you could have sprayed that black if you wanted to painted it i'm just going to put this Teak dye on, like I say, and it soaks in really nice. You don't need a lot of it, so you can really just dab it on, like so. And you can see how easy, hopefully, you can see how easy that spreads. And you can see the difference in that. And I might go over this twice, just get those side bits done. Obviously, if you had a big enough tray, you could probably dip this in and let it sit for a bit. But for me, it takes literally a couple of minutes. Just to colour it all like so. And you'll see how it's soaked in. And it's gone them side walls more or less done already. So I'll do the full piece with this light teak. Like so. And I'll do the dark teak on the backer. And then we'll come back when both pieces have been done.
Right, you can see from that, everything's nicely dried out. I do like the dark teak, the contrast over the light teak there. So that's gone really nice. I'm quite happy with that. Nothing's broken off at all. So, so far, so good. Next stage for me, literally I want to spray a bit of varnish on this just to shine this up. Both pieces, front and the backer. Just enough so we know, like I said, a bit of varnish put on it. Because once the resin goes in, we literally just slightly fill it nearly level to the lines, just slightly below. We still want to feel the actual scroll saw sections. And this project, apart from putting a little anger on the back, will be finished. On other uh, resin projects, I've overfilled deliberately, and then you can sand it all flush if it's been a router project, and then flood coat with resin over top. But that's another video, so we've done plenty of those to look at. So for now, at least we're going to spray it all with a varnish. I have no preference. It could be a square lacquer one day. It could be a yacht varnish on another day. And a polyurethane on another day. For me, for my little bits of projects, they all basically do the same thing. So we'll give it a nice spray round. I'll go outside and do that. And spray the full thing. Then once it's dry, we'll go and find some resin and basically... Stick this down to the backer. Now, you could think maybe you want to pour resin over the old please, uh, piece, should I say. Just flood coat the full thing. And you could place it on there. Literally stick it down and put some weights over the top just to hold it down. But for me, I don't want any resin on this outer edge. We're just going to rely on the varnish for that spray. So unfortunately, it's a case of brushing all the resin on into these areas here. It takes a matter of seconds. I'll show you that in a minute. Once we find our resin. And then we'll just place it in the right area. We might put some little markers on. Just so we get it nice and central. You can see we've got a slight little. Little bevel happening in there. That's just as it's dried out. Because I've took it indoors into the warmth of the house. But once we've got some weights on. I can guarantee you. The rate of the resin will certainly hold that in place. But for now. Quick spray about. And then when we come back. Hopefully. We should be ready to stick this piece down. I do have that rest on a little board at the moment. That's just to keep it off the dusty table. And you'll see the difference when this goes on. And that will be our finished project. You can see how dark that's going now. That'll be really nice. And hopefully just enough for what we want around there. We don't have to do too crazy in the middle. Remember, once that's gone back in place, once it's been sprayed outside, we're not going to see any of that middle section. So don't waste your varnish just doing the old piece. But for the matter of seconds, it's entirely up to you. So I'll come back when both of these pieces have been sprayed. And then we're on to the resin time. Right, that's all nicely dry. The varnish, the stainer. You'll see those little blue tags on there. Bit of tape. That's literally just so when we come to stick this down, I can line it up with those straight edges, hopefully. And it would be somewhere near. Instead of them just putting it on and trying to square it up and mess about with too much resin on. Now I'm going to stick this all down with resin. Now you have two options. Obviously you can just pour your resin on there. Spread it about. And then stick that straight down. I don't want any resin coming out these side bits. And I don't want any resin on the actual framework itself. We just want to leave our little varnish on there. I don't know if you're going to get it. But you can see there's just, just enough on there to say we've got a bit of a shine going down. So for me, it's just going to be a simple case of turning this over. And I'll just brush resin onto the back of all of this. It's a slow process. You may have to sacrifice an old brush of some description. I will literally just use the back of these cheap plastic knife and forks. We'll mix the resin in and I'll just, just scrape it on the back like that. Doesn't matter about going on here, remember. We're going to cover all that with coloured resin. And I'll just literally brush it on. And when you hold it up to the light, you'll see a nice shine on it. So you're not going to miss anything. And obviously, we'll put a nice skim all the way around it. So it's a case of finding an option that works best for you. For mixing in, literally, party cups, you get a hundred of those for next to nothing. And I mark it off A for your resin, 
or epoxy resins come in two parts so A for your resin and there will be a B for your hardener just check out your resins some you mix by volume so same of B the same of A some you mix by weight some mixtures are 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1 this is a 1 to 1 mix so exactly the same of B to the same amount of A in two separate containers they do say transfer into a third one I personally never bothered I'll just mix one into the other mix it all around and then we'll come back with our little plastic cups and basically brush that in remember we are just doing the back of this so we don't need a lot so I've gone up four four little markers good thing about these cups they do have little grooves on the side so I've gone up four of them for A and four for B so I'll mix this off camera and then we come back it's just going to be a simple, simple case of covering all the back of our fish back in a minute right there's all our resin nicely mixed up now i'm not overly concerned about any bubbles or how clear it is if you want it clearer you can stand it in some warm water for five minutes or so and it will clear up and all them bubbles will disappear but that's not going to affect us we're basically just using this resin as a glue to stick this topper to the backer always have your gloves on put gloves on please don't follow me have your gloves on you want plenty of ventilation get the proper mask for resin you can get irritation some people get quite sore with the resin on the skin and breathing it in and obviously so be careful do your research please don't use me as an example that's for sure so it's going to be a simple case of colouring all this back section like I said previously you could at least just pour that onto there turn this over and stick it to it but I don't want it to run out onto the side section so it's a slower slower process like I would normally do is literally just get your resin like so and you, you can rub it over the back like that it'll probably take us five minutes to do all this like so and if you hold it up to the right lighting if you're not too sure you will get a nice shine on there so you know exactly where you've been or you can sacrifice a nice little old brush like so and use that just to do the same thing like that it doesn't matter if we get it on there remember we are going to cover that all in so you get the general idea from that i'll just take my time and if you just cover all this back up not forgetting to do all our sides over there and then when i come back We'll be ready to flick it over make sure you get plenty on any little cracks or any little splits that are in this plywood or whatever it is the resin will find you when you put your colors in so don't be frightened to put plenty on i'll be back in a minute when i've totally covered all this one right you can more or less see from that We've got it all the way around, hopefully. Like I said previously, if you hold it up to the light, you'll see that lovely shine. So any dull sections, you can literally just dab on a bit more. And hopefully there'll be enough there just to seal that. So it's just a simple case of flicking it over, getting our little markers somewhere near, like so, and we'll drop that into place. Right over that way. And that looks about right. Just excuse me a minute. Yes, that's all nicely lined up. So that's it. That's all we can do for now. We'll keep that pressed down like so. Once you've got it all in the right place, you can move it slightly if you want it a bit more out. And then you can take your tapes off. You can pop them on there. Just to hold that into place, then we'll get a nice, put a plate over the top and some weights. And we'll just leave that for 24 hours. And hopefully when we come back tomorrow, this will all be nicely stuck down. We'll put it to one side and we'll come back in 24 hours. Right, it's literally 24 hours. I took the weights off and I've removed all the tape that went around the edges. And hopefully that's all nicely sealed now. Don't be concerned about any 
little resin blobs we have there. Remember, we're going to cover all this completely with nice coloured resin. And so far, it looks like it's all nicely sealed. You never know. We might be a little leak somewhere. Nothing to be too concerned about as such. I'd like to fill these in separately. So fill a section, I'll miss a gap, then fill a section and miss a gap and so on. By the time you come on to your next colour, if you've got any leakages, you should be able to see them coming through. And it's just a case of getting your blue tape and we'll just stick it on there and make a bit of a dam. And then we're going to have to leave it for a day to set and then we can start again a little time later. But hopefully, if we're good, as we go along, we've got no leakages, we should get this done in a one -er. So as before, same with your two resins. You can see there, I've actually got the resin and an adner. They've actually gone into the wrong containers, so that's A, your resin, and that will go B, your, Oz, your adner. You can see the difference in coloration. I'll pop that in there, give it a nice mix round. I'll do that off camera, just the same as we did before when we stuck the main piece to the backer. And then I'll use acrylic paints. Some nice blues in there, some greens kicking about for the reeds. I'm going to go yellow and black on there. I believe I have a black somewhere. Here's the black. And we'll just work it out and just fill each section in as we go along. Hopefully we see one in between. And when we come back, this little project will be finished. Remember, we've already put on our varnish. And you could spray that on a bit more now if you wanted to. But I'm happy with what we've got. So we're just going to put it in, literally so it's just slightly below the actual cutout area. And then once it's cured, it will concave slightly. You have a little bit of a dip on it. So you might want to go level with that. Just allow for that, but I still want to be able to feel the cutout section. Okay, quick mix with this resin. When we come back, we'll fill it all in, and then uh, we're heading towards the finishing line. Right, there's our first bit of resin nicely mixed up. I've actually transferred some from the first mix I did. Just so we're going to try a small section first, just to make sure everything seems to be going to plan. We'll try a bit of green on this first one. You don't need a lot in. So a couple of dabs. You can always add a little bit more, but don't go over the top of your colours. I do say there's a certain ratio of the mix to paint of 10% to the resin, but I personally had no issues before. Now the colours will look slightly different on camera, but when we finish the project, we'll go back to the shed and hopefully we'll get a nice I right, so look outside with the daylight, should I say. I'll let you pour these in. I like to get a nice cocktail stick just to help it along its way. And then we move on to the next section and next section. And as you put each section in, just get yourself a lighter of some description. I prefer the smaller ones like this. There is bigger ones like this, like so. And we literally would go over the resin and just go skim over the top like that. And that helps release any of those little air bubbles. So we'll speed things up because once the first section's gone in we're not really a lot to look at. Now you may get away with pouring straight in like so. Put a little bit in there. Remember have your gloves on, get a nice mask on, plenty of ventilation and I can see we want a little bit in there like so, a little dab down Oop, there it goes, and I believe there's a little bit in there to go. Good thing about these plastic spoons, they have little scoops on, so if you're not too sure about pouring it in, you can literally just get it straight off your spoon, like so. And we've got a little bit left still, that's no problem. Come in with your little cocktail stick, and just help spread that about, like so. And then we we'll look around, and if you want a bit more in, we can actually just top them up. That one maybe not far off. Obviously, we need a little bit more in that one there. So a little more dabby in that one. That's all we need, and then we'll fill this one in here, like so. Okay, we get the general idea from there, don't you? So we. We'll We'll fill this green in first, and by the time we come to our next colour, we will see if anything's 
leaking out. And then once it's all in like that, you just come over with your lighter and then just skim over the top like that. That one's actually out of gas, believe it or not. Doesn't matter. Just skim over like that and you'll see the all the balls just disappearing. Okay, I'll continue and then when we come back, this hopefully will be complete. Right, that's all nicely filled in. As we've put each colour in, we've literally gone with our lighter and skimmed over like that. And that just helps all those bubbles disappear. Now we'll put this to one side for a good 24, 48 hours. And then when we come back, we'll have a better look outside. And hopefully this little project will be finished. You can see that nice shine there from all that lovely resin. Okay, put it to one side. Find yourself a cover of some description. I'm if you're going to use these little milk bottle tops, and that's just enough to get into each corner, like so. And I've got myself a nice cover, and we will basically just cover that over like that, and we'll leave that to one side. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. It's literally about 24 hours later and you can see from that everything's nice and solid. We've had no issues with that resin whatsoever. I say apart from, I do find on the first blue that we poured and I don't know because I had to thaw it out. Remember the resin was solid. I've got a little bit of smoking effect in there. It's really hard to show you on the camera. It's a little smoky swirls in there. I don't know what that is but I certainly haven't got it on any of the other colours. All the blues are all fine, the greens. Black's a fantastic colour to do the resin in with the acrylics. And so is white. Some colours do go better than others. But yeah, for some reason, it's really hard to show you. You've just got some bit of smoking on there, but I'm just being very critical. I'm sure that'll look a nice piece on anybody's wall. And that's it. This little project is a finish. We had no leakages anywhere. Everything's sealed nicely. We're putting the resin on the back of our three millimeter recycled draw backer, remember? Then we stuck it down onto our 12 millimeter hardwood plywood, using the resin to stick it down, leave it overnight, and that sealed that completely. No issues whatsoever with that. And then remember, we just used acrylic paint mixed in with our resin and just filled each section at a time. And then going over with your lighter, just get rid of all those bubbles. And I'm quite happy with that one. There's no problem. That's apart from this blue. I'm going to mention it again. That just uh, so it's got a little bit of a smokiness inside of it. But it is what it, what it is. And remember, we use the dark teak for the teak for the backer. A light teak. Quick spray bit of varnish. And then we popped it all in. And it measures in at 13 inches by 17 inches across. And we use a Pegasus number 5 spiral blade to cut it all out with. And that's it. This little project is finished. I'll simply just pop a little ring hook on the back for hanging purposes. We'll take it outside now so you can get a better look at the lighting on it. But that's no problem. It's got lovely shine to it, that one, remember. 
These resin projects are for indoor only. You won't be able to put them outside because of the cold. And UV light will soon fade all these colours with the sunlight on it. So indoor projects only for these kind of ones. And that's it. We're all done. Nice little red eyes in there. Originally I was going to dremel out a hole in the middle of those and drop a bit of black in. But I think I'm just going to leave it at that. So two angel fish cut out on a scroll saw. Inlaid with resin mixed with acrylic paints. Have a go. Just enjoy yourselves. Thanks very much for watching.